Hey everyone, it's Amber from The Sensible Mama. It is Five Ways Wednesday and today we're talking all about potty training. I want to start off by saying that everything in this video is just my opinion. I'm not an expert on any of this. I'm just a mom who is probably a little bit further down the road of potty training than you are if you clicked on this video. Um, so I really encourage you to watch this video and then go watch other videos on YouTube because it's always a really good idea to get multiple perspectives. I was really inspired by some of the videos by my friend Kim over from Bits and Bites. I watched all of her stuff on potty training before I started potty training my son. Um, Caitlin Nyer is doing some content on potty training right now, which I think is really great. And there's just tons of great YouTubers out there who are talking about their experiences with potty training and giving their advice. So watch lots of videos. That's actually, that's tip number one. Watch lots of videos and um, make sure that you're getting multiple perspectives because you're not going to get every perspective here from me. I also want to say that once I've gone through the five things for this video, I'm going to wrap up the video by talking directly to moms who have speech delayed children. Um, this is something that we dealt with with Roman and I had a lot of questions and concerns and I think I, I didn't really see a lot of videos out there that addressed that particular issue. So I'm going to address you guys at the end of this video. If you have a child who is um, in the 18 to 24 month range and is not reliably producing at least 10 words like reliably every day, maybe you should tune in to the end of this video as well because a speech delay diagnosis might be in your future. That's not to say it definitely will be, but it doesn't hurt to, to get some of that info now just in case that's going to come your way in the future and you already have some, some tips. <laughs> The description box of this video is like always, it's just going to be chock full of useful stuff. I'm going to link everything that I show here um, and just give you lots of additional information that might be useful to you. So if there's anything you see in this video that you want to get your hands on, go ahead and check the description box because it's all going to be down in there. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump right in. My advice number one is to get yourself mentally prepared before you begin. And for me, the best way to do that was to start with this book called Oh Crap Potty Training. It is a fantastic book and I had a hard time taking it seriously because of the title. I was like, this can't be a serious book, but it is actually just chock full of really, really great tips for potty training. It worked for us. It worked for all of my friends who used it and a bunch of us were potty training at the same time and we were just like texting each other like, I can't believe that this approach is working. I'm not going to go into the whole book. That could be a whole video in and of itself, but the central premise of Oh Crap Potty Training is the idea of just making your kid naked. You devote like a whole weekend where you say, we're not leaving the house, we're staying home. We are constantly keeping an eye on our potty training little one and we just leave them naked. And, and what you're doing is you're kind of looking for the signs that your child gives, because they do, they give signs of when they're gonna go to the bathroom, but that's hard to see when they have on a diaper or pants or whatever. So the idea is to get them totally naked, put a potty chair somewhere in the house or a step stool to the big potty if that's what you're gonna use and you just watch them nonstop. And every time they're about to go to the bathroom, you rush them to the potty. If they're in the middle of going potty, you rush them to the potty um, and you devote like two or three days to that. And the, the magic of that approach, the oh crap potty training naked baby approach is that in two to three days, you are 99% potty trained. It is astonishing to me. And so I really think that when it comes to this book that I'm recommending is that it helps you set up a plan. You don't necessarily have to follow her plan if you don't like it, but look around online for other books as well that, that are talking about potty training and that actually give a step-by-step -step plan for you. Because if you don't have a plan, you are going to be seriously lost. If you're going to read this book, and I'm just going to throw this out there, I think that the author of this book has got just such an incredibly cute personality. She's funny. She's sassy. She's relatable. She swears a little bit. Like she's just, she's just a fun, relatable mom who I'd probably like to sit down and have a beer with and just talk about mom life. But the first 60 pages of her book are pretty much fluff. Like it, it's, it's useful stuff, but a lot of it is kind of common sense. And a lot of it is just her kind of being pithy and cute. And when you're really, really trying to just get the information, like the step-by-step -step breakdown of what to do, those first 60 pages are exhausting to get through. So if you kind of already know the mindset of just like, I know that I have to forgive myself. I know I have to forgive my child when they screw up. I know that it takes patience and all that other stuff. Skip to like around page 60. And that's where you get to the good meaty stuff of like what to actually do. So I highly recommend this book. Um, 
I just think, I think it, for, for us, it was just the most wonderful gift in terms of preparing for potty training. So that's my tip number one is the Oh Crap Potty Training book. It is linked down below, like I said earlier, if you wanna check it out. Tip number two is something that is not a necessity, but I think it's something that can be really helpful if you have the money to do it. And that is to call out Stanley Steamer and have them clean and protect your carpet before you get started. We have um, hardwood floor in our kitchen, but we have <laughs> carpet in our living room. And although I tried my very best to keep my son in the kitchen, it's just pretty much impossible, especially with my one-year-old at the time who was also needing me and wanting to be in the living room with her toys. It was just impossible for me to keep my son in the kitchen and he felt bad about it. He felt like he was getting left out. It was just a whole mess. So by having Stanley Steamer come out, we just had one room done. And what's kind of cool about Stanley Steamer is at least when we had this done, they only charge by the room. It's, they don't charge by square feet. So you don't have to know how the square footage of your living room or whatever. You just say, I want one room done and they give you a quote. It's it's not, it's not the most affordable thing out there, but it's not outrageously priced either. You can schedule everything online so you don't have to speak to a single person, which is fantastic. I just, oh. When they come out, they move all of your furniture for you at no additional cost. They will put all of your like big furniture up on blocks um, so that the carpet can kind of breathe underneath of it. They do a fantastic job. And the first thing that they do is they clean. And then the more important thing that they do is they can protect. The sealant is something that you have to pay extra for, but I'm telling you it is 100% worth it. This means that if there are accidents on the floor, which are going to happen, um, your, your carpet is just a little bit more protected from that. And it just, gives you some peace of mind as you're dealing with this whole process. When you see accidents happen on your carpet, you know it's gonna come up and that sealant, it actually really does work. Stanley Steamer also has their own spot remover and I bought this from them after I saw them use it in my own living room. This is the best spot remover I have ever tried. It got up every single accident that Roman threw its way and it's just, it's a little bit more expensive. Um, than a lot of the other stuff that you can find at like Publix. But the reason why is that this has no residue in it. And actually what I learned from Stanley Steamers is that the reason why like dark spots keep coming back is actually because a lot of the spot removers have residue in them and dirt sticks to the residue and then it just keeps on bringing that dirty spot back. So this doesn't have any residue in it, which means it's actually going to like clean the spot that's dirty and then it's gonna prevent the dirt from clinging to it and it actually stays clean. So I definitely recommend if you can't afford it, um, scheduling an appointment with Stanley Steamer, getting them to come in clean and protect. And if anything, if you can't do all that, then just get this and use this for spot treating the places where there are accidents. It is worth it. My third tip is to use the Potty Fun Potty Watch. And let me tell you, I was very skeptical about this at first. I had watched Caitlin Nyer's video where she had tried a similar potty watch and it did not go well for her and her daughter. Uh, but I tried the Potty Fun Watch and it was amazing. We started it when Roman was about 90% potty trained. He had reached that point where like, they get excited about potty training at first. It's new, it's fun, it's exciting, they're accomplishing things. Um, but then eventually that excitement kind of wears off and then you reach the stage where they don't want to stop doing what they're doing to go potty and then accidents start up again, even though you really thought you were past that stage. So what the Potty Fun Watch did was it basically went on his wrist and it allowed me to set reminders every 30, 60, or 90 minutes for him to go to the bathroom. What was so cool about it is that it actually like put this really cool sound that came out. He was always excited when he heard it and he'd take off running for the potty to go potty. But the best thing about the Potty Fun Watch was that it doesn't just remind them to go to the bathroom. It's linked, well, it, it goes along with their website that is incentivized. And what that means is you can sit your child down in the morning and you can choose a mission that they're on. And like basically a little puzzle piece comes up and every time they successfully go to the potty, they get to come to the website and click a little button showing that they went potty and they get to hear a special fun little song and a special new icon or sticker or thing gets revealed to them and they learn about stuff. Like they learn about farm animals or they learn about um, automobiles or things like that. So it's fun, it's educational, it's gamified. And the coolest part about it is that you actually get to set a reward for your child. So they have this rewards list that has things like get a toy car, get a teddy bear, get an ice cream, you know, like fun little things. And you can actually print out a ticket from the website. So after they've successfully done the entire puzzle, I think it's like six times maybe. Once they've successfully done that, you print out the ticket and you present it to them. And now they realize that they have this new ticket that they get to cash in to get whatever that reward was. So the teddy bear or the car or the ice cream or whatever. 
And for Roman, it was just really exciting. He loved it. He looked forward to it every day. And that potty fun watch got us the, the rest of the way there with the potty training. I think we only used it for about three days. And then like most toddlers, the newness had worn off and he lost interest. But it was really the, the last thing that got us the rest of the way there with the potty training. Tip number four is to have a really great home set up for potty training. And for me, that included two things. That included the um, small little potty that we actually set up in our kitchen. And that was where, that was like home base for where we started with potty training. I didn't want to be trying to run him back and forth to the bathroom, which is that way. And our living room is that way. It was just too long of a run. I was never going to make it. So we purchased a seat a lot like this. We don't have it any longer. Um, but it, it was fantastic. It was just a little thing where you can sit in the kitchen. Um, we liked to put change pads underneath it, or you can actually get absorbent puppy pads as well, just because sometimes they miss the potty altogether. But having that set up right there in the kitchen where we were doing the potty training was great. When I started seeing the signs that he was about to go to the bathroom, I would pick him up, plop him on the potty, and it was one and done. As he got a little bit bigger, and um, as we were just doing those last sort of phases of potty training, and now that he's fully potty trained, what we use instead is a step stool to climb up onto the potty by himself. I will put a little clip of that right here. This is the one that we're using, and I absolutely love it. It's well put together, it folds down so you can easily fold it over and move it around, and it's just been, it's, it's great. Now when Roman has quiet time in his bedroom, he can get down out of his bed, go into his bathroom, climb up on the potty by himself, and handle his business, and it's fantastic. As long as it's not number two, he's, he's totally taken care of. So that was our home setup, and it worked really, really well between the standalone potty, the potty ladder that we had, and then the puppy pads or change pads. It was just a really, really great setup. Well, hi. Here he is, by the way. We're not napping or having quiet time today, so whatever, I'm just gonna make it work. <laughs> Tip number five is to make sure that you have your on-the-go game locked down and I made a lot of mistakes in this regard but I think I have it all nailed down now. The first thing that I did was to actually put a potty in my car. Now I drive an Xterra which makes that a lot easier because I have a big back trunk area that I could put it but that thing was a lifesaver so many times where we were on the road and we're nowhere close to a place where he could go potty. Um, especially with my, my daughter Abby in the car it was just <laughs> so the, the thought of like trying to get a toddler who's about to have an accident out of his car seat, get his little sister out of her car seat, and get both of them inside fast enough for him to not have an accident hey. in his pants. Hey, like, mommy. just that thought was terrible to me. Hey, mommy. So having that potty seat in the car was great because I could just uh, get him out of his car seat and plop him down on his little potty, um, even like on the side of the road if we had to. We were gonna do what we had to do. I also purchased these potty seat liners for on the go. This was great because he could just go into the potty and that liner was inside of it. You could just close up the liner and toss it, which was great. However, I really didn't prefer to do it that way. Of course, I would much rather teach him how to hold it until we got somewhere. So um, I definitely wanted to have a setup for my diaper bag of all the things that I needed for potty training when we were actually in a bathroom. For me, the best setup was actually the 12 little on the go diapering clutch. It's just the right size for everything that you need. It's not what I always carry because because it is a little bit bulky, but especially when I had just started potty training, this was everything. Right now we use, we tend to use more of like the Planet Wise small wet bag, um, just cause it's a little bit smaller and I don't need as much now that he's reliable with potty training. But here's how we started out. Um, so I'm just gonna open this up a little bit cause it's kind of cool. You can keep everything in one place in here. Whoops. I don't think in real life you'd be opening this like that. Um, so. What fell out was actually my hand sanitizer. You can really tuck that in anywhere. I had it sitting in this little loop right here, which is too big for a sanitizer this size, but it just kind of held it in place enough while the bag was closed up. On this side here, I have spare pull-ups for my son. I have the included change pad that comes with the diaper and clutch behind that. And then behind that, I always kept a um, Jujube Be Quick with a change of pants inside of it and all of that fit right underneath here. Then on the other side, I had some little disposable baggies. This is like what you use when you're uh, in diapers, but I just found that sometimes we had accidents not near the bathroom and there was 
some stuff that needed to be picked up from the floor and this was a really great thing to have in those cases. Over here I have my foldable potty seat, which I've shown you guys this in a lot of my videos, but just for the sake of having everything in one place. This is the foldable potty seat that we use. I love this because it's really easy to wipe down. It fits on every single toilet and it fits Roman's tiny little bum. So I can actually put this right on top of the potty and he's able to go on big kid potties. And this fits in just about every kind of clutch or pouch I've tried to fit it in, which is great. Then behind that, what I have is a big bag of potty seat covers. These things I found on Amazon as well. Um, and they just pretty much fit over the big potty. So you put this down first and then you put down the foldable potty seat. Um, Cause I found that Roman tends to put his hands on the potty and <laughs> ugh, don't want him touching that. So um, he's over there playing with his dinosaurs um, in case you're picking up on that. So having these has been really, really fantastic. Again, these were from Amazon, so I'll link those. The foldable potty seat was from Amazon as well. In fact, pretty much everything here was on Amazon except for the 12 little diapering clutch, which is available at thesensiblemama.com. So I will link that down below as well. So those are my five tips for potty training. I hope it was useful. I don't feel like it was comprehensive enough at all, but at least it's some of the basics that I think will be helpful for you guys. Um, if you do not have a speech delayed child, you can probably exit the video now. Thank you so much for watching. But if you are interested in hearing a little bit of my advice about speech delayed children and potty training, we're gonna start that now. I think that the, the one mistake that I made that, that was probably the most hurtful to my son was not giving him the benefit of the doubt that he was still able to be potty trained even though he was so speech delayed. But in my head, I was like, he's not able to communicate his needs just yet and I'd rather not potty train him now. And so Roman was very late going into potty training. And in fact, the only reason why I finally broke down and decided to potty train him was because his preschool had a stipulation that when the January semester began, they had to they had to be most of the way potty trained. So I was like, I don't want us stressing out about that. I don't want us to be under a time crunch, so we're just gonna do this now. What I learned from potty training Roman was that you really can underestimate your child a little bit when they're speech delayed. And it was just astonishing to me to see how well he was able to communicate his potty needs. Um, like there were a lot of nonverbal cues and not just involuntary involuntary ones like you know grabbing at his crotch and things like that like he actually did some nonverbal cues to me like making eye contact with me and making the cue to let me know that he had a, had to go to the potty even if that just meant pointing at the potty you know what i mean um so even d take language off the table spoken language he was still able to let me know that he needed to go to the potty and that was something that i just didn't give him the benefit of the doubt about. The next thing that was truly mind blowing for me, and this is something that if you're in speech therapy now, or if that's in your future, one of the first things that you start to learn from them, the, the speech therapist, is that a lot of coaxing language out of a child has to do with teaching them that words have a cause and effect. They can, they can manipulate the world around them with their words. And I thought, well, of course Roman knows that. Why do I have to teach him that? But it was really true. So speech therapy is a lot of gameplay where you're doing like, stop, go, stop, go. And once they start producing the words and you run around and they say stop and you stop and they say go and you go and you're teaching them that they can control their environment to some extent. One of the things that I realized with potty training was I had given him this brand new way of doing cause and effect. And what was so crazy was that he actually started producing a lot of words related to potty training. He started saying pee pee and poo poo and potty. Um, he said poppy. <laughs> but there were just all these words that suddenly started coming from him that I didn't think he was ready to say. He was delayed on everything else. I just never saw him being able to produce language related to pottying. So it was really amazing to watch him really grow with his language during that time and it really makes me wish that I had started a little bit earlier back when he was actually showing signs of being ready to start potty training because we could have done it so much earlier and honestly I think that that process is what like a, a switch flipped for him in terms of his language and he just really started producing a lot more words after that point which was 
amazing. Now, I don't know if that's gonna be everybody's experience or not, but I do think that you should at least give it a try, even if everything in your heart says they're not ready, they can't speak enough yet, just try. And, and be willing to let it go if they're not ready yet. Um, I know that everything in all the books says you have to be consistent, don't give up, and, and I agree with that, but I also think if you have a child who is a little bit delayed, it's not a bad idea to try things out and then to be willing to say, I don't think that my child is developmentally ready for this right now and we're gonna, instead of making this a terrible, frustrating experience for everyone, we're just gonna wait a little while and I think that's okay and I think you know your child best and you just gotta kinda test the waters and see and make the best decision that you can make as a parent because at the end of the day, even the experts who write the books, they know everything about potty training but they know nothing about your kid. And I don't mean to say that to be like, just do whatever you want, it'll be fine. I definitely stand by what I said before that you should, you should have a plan and you should follow a plan that you know works like the Oh Crap Potty Training book. But I just mean that watching your child's cues and really being, being very sensitive to how it's going for them, being sensitive to the fact that they need to feel like they're succeeding and they need to feel empowered, not unempowered you know they need to they need to not feel discouraged and deflated it needs to be a process that is that that makes them feel like they're accomplishing something and feel proud and if you start and because of the language delay or other delays that they might have you just feel like it's a deflating experience for them I I in my opinion think you should stop and maybe try again a little bit down the road but my, my main premise here is don't be afraid to try either. So guys, that's gonna be it for me today. My toddler Roman has had enough of me doing this video and uh, I'm gonna go spend some time with him. We have a vlog that's gonna be coming out tomorrow, nope, Friday, that is all about what we're up to today as soon as I'm done filming this video. So check that out on Friday. If you wanna see more content from me, I do mom life, packing videos, tutorials, vlogs, you name it. Um, if you like that kind of thing, hit the subscribe button so I can see you again. Love ya, mean it, always, Mwah! and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.